Hi friends, welcome to Interactive Medicine. In this video, uh, we teach about the abdominal iota and its branches. The abdominal iota begins, it scores from the aortic hiatus, aortic hiatus of the diaphragm and terminates with the aortic bifurcation at the L4. The abdominal iota descends along the left side of the tubal column. The inferior vena cava resides on the right. The abdominal iota gives rise to the visceral branches and the parietal branches. Visceral branches consist of the unpaired and paired and the parietal consists three arteries, the inferior phrenic artery, phrenic means diaphragm, the lumbar artery, the median sacral artery. The unpaired branches are three great arteries, the celiac trunk, we can see here, the celiac trunk, one sorry, okay, we can read, the celiac trunk, uh, the superior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery. The paired branches in the visceral surface are the renal artery, uh, the, sorry, the renal artery, and the left, right renal artery, and the left renal artery the gonadal arteries or that means testicular or ovarian arteries the celiac trunk uh, gives off three branches left gastric artery common hepatic artery splenic artery the superior mesentery gives five major arteries inferior pancreatic duodenal artery intestinal artery ileocolic artery right colic artery middle colic artery inferior mesentery gives left colic artery sigmoid arteries superior rectal arteries the celiac trunk is arises from the uh, upper portion of the abdominal iota and at the level of tetal uh, it appears as a thick uh, but short um, it gives three branches known as the hollow stripoid first we uh, first we need to study the left gastric artery okay friends uh, we can see the uh, left gastric artery here we can see its path it is the left gastric artery and it gives its uh, esophageal branches it is seen in the lesser curvature of stomach it supplies to uh, it is supplies to the stomach and it anastomoses with the right gastric artery we can see it anastomoses with the right gastric artery uh, next we start a study about the hepatic uh, common hepatic artery it is the sorry it is the common hepatic artery you can draw uh, common hepatic artery and uh, it can it, it has uh, mainly three branches hepatic artery proper it is the hepatic artery proper and the right gastric artery here is the right gastric artery and uh, uh, gastroduodenal artery it is gastroduodenal artery um, we can see that uh, the gastroduodenal artery has two branches here it is the uh, superior uh, it is the superior pancreatic duodenal artery and here we can see the right gastromandel artery right gastro omendal artery here it is okay we can study the functions of hepatic artery prop, uh, proper hepatic artery proper we can see it gives the right and left branches the right branches gives to uh, gives the cystic artery for gallbladder and the left hepatic artery it gives two branches here and it reaches the porta hepatis on, uh, when reaching the porta hepatis, uh, the hepatic artery proper divides into two, and the right gastric artery we can see here it is anastomosis with the left gastric artery. Uh, we already said uh, the superior pancreas uh, gastroduodenal artery artery contains two branches here be the superior 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 pancreatic duodenal artery uh, it has two branches the anterior and posterior uh, it descends to supply the duodenum we can see the duodenum here and the head of the pancreas here 
these two branches gives to the duodenum and head of pancreas the right uh, gastromandel artery we can see it is the right gastromandel artery it uh, runs leftwards to reach the greater curvature of stomach uh, there there are the artery gives short branches to the stomach we can see here and and the great um, great romandel it anastomoses with the left gastromandel artery we can see uh, the left gastromandel artery it is the left gastromandel artery and the right gastromandel artery anastomoses with the left gastromandel artery the left gastromandel artery is given by the splenic artery we can study later uh, next we are studying the splenic artery here it is the splenic artery it uh, the direction it is uh, close to backward backward to the stomach the greatest branches of celiac tract the artery runs from the right to left along the superior border of pancreas uh, in direction of splenic uh, splenic hilum we can see here and there it gives several branches at the splenic branches that enter the spleen uh, it has the pancreatic branches left gastromandel artery and short gastric artery and uh, the pancreatic branches we can see we can see the pancreatic branches of uh, splenic artery here you can see here it is uh, supplies to the pancreas the body and it supplies to the body and the tide of the pancreas and also the left gastromandel artery We can see the left gastromandel artery here. Spleen. It is the left gastromandel artery, uh, which anastomoses with the uh, right gastromandel artery. It runs within the gastrosplenic ligament in the direction of greater curvature of stomach. There, it anastomoses with the right uh, right artery of the same name. We already said. The short gastric arteries uh, run within the gastrosplenic ligament to the fundus of uh, stomach. You can see the gast short gastric arteries. Yeah. Superior mesenteric artery here we can see, and it uh, uh, lies at the level of L1, and it runs downwards and somewhat anteriorly posterior to the head of the pancreas. On arising from behind the head of pancreas. The artery passes along the anterior surface of duodenum and enters the mesentery of small intestine, give off its principal branches. The first its branch is inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. It ascends between the head of pancreas and the duodenum. You can see here the artery anastomoses with both the superior pancreatic duodenal arteries. We can see the posterior. Posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery, and here is the anterior inferior, inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. Uh, it is supplies the area of uh, the pan, the head of the pancreas and the duodenum. Next, uh, we can discuss about the intestinal arteries of superior mesenteric artery. Here is the jejunal artery. and its straight arteries and we can see here is the ileal ileal arteries here we can draw here ileal artery and its uh, straight arteries here both arteries has its uh, um, the dichotomizing arteries form several lines of arched anastomosis called the arcades. The general ge general arteries form three anastomotic uh, anastomotic lines and ileal two. The distal lines gives off numerous uh, forking branches uh, that enfold the small intestine on both sides. Next, we can study about the ileocolic artery. We can draw ileocolic artery here. Here is the iliocolic artery. 
it arises from the right aspect of main trunk that means the superior mesenteric artery the art the artery descends rightwards and reach the idiosyncratic angle to give off its branches we can see its branches here the arcade gives off branches to cecum here is the cecum cecum portion its branches gives to cecum area it has both anterior and posterior cecal arteries and it also to the vermiform appendix that artery is known as uh, appendicular artery and to the terminal portion it is the terminal portion of the ilium uh, and the ilial branches which means uh, the iliocolic artery that its terminal portion gives uh, gives to the uh, the both the vermiform and the ilium Uh, next we can study the right colic artery yeah right colic artery here and the iliac colic is here it uh, the right colic artery is arising from the right aspect of superior mesenteric artery it runs across the abdominal cavity to the ascending colon here we can see the ascending colon there it gives the ascending and descending branches the descending branch as anastomosis with the iliac colic artery and the descending the descending branch anastomosis with the iliac colic artery and the ascending with the middle colic artery we can see here uh, the descending branch is anastomosis with the iliac colic artery we can see the middle colic artery here Uh, the middle colic artery the ascending branch of uh, right colic artery anastomosis with the uh, middle colic artery next we can study the middle colic artery here uh, it arises slightly above the right colic artery sometimes they share a common trunk and ascend in direction of the transverse colon we can see it's here and also it gives branches to here it forms arcades on reaching the intestine the artery gives off the right and the left branches that anastomosis with the right and the left colic artery we can see the uh, left colic artery here the middle colic artery is uh, anastomosis with the left and right colic artery next we can study the inferior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery we can see here the inferior mesenteric artery arises from the anterior aspect of abdominal artery 4.5 cm above the aortic bifurcation or at the level of l3 it descends leftwards anterior to the left common iliac artery the artery gives the branches of left colic artery we can see here uh, the left colic artery its ascending branch and the descending branch of left colic artery and on reaching the intestine uh, the artery gives uh, gives ascending and descending branch we already said that anastomosis with the middle colic artery and sigmoid artery the ascending branch gives anastomosis with the middle colic artery and the descending branch gives to anastomosis with the sigmoid arteries here we can also sigmoid arteries can uh, study about the sigmoid arteries here uh, the sigmoid arteries uh, it resides within the sigmoid mesocolon we can see the sigmoid mesocolon here it is the sigmoid mesocolon it uh, the sigmoid arteries uh, resides within the sigmoid mesocolon and descending leftwards descending leftwards they anastomosis with the left colic and the superior rectal arteries we can see the superior rectal arteries here 
yeah. The sigmoid artery is anastomosis with the superior rectal arteries. It is the superior rectal artery. The superior rectal artery is rather, rather a larger, uh, larger vessel and that uh, descends anterior to the promontory. That means promontory means the protuberance of an organ. The artery anastomosis with the sigmoid arteries and the middle rectal artery. We can see middle rectal artery here. I will show you it is the middle rectal artery and the superior rectal artery anastomosis with uh, the middle rectal artery uh, we also need to study a term the Riolan arc or, or arc of Riolan um, the arc of artery uh, uh, the uh, arc of artery is formed by uh, the middle colic artery the middle colic artery is anastomosis with the ascending branch of uh, left colic artery this arc is known as the Riolan arc okay uh, here is the ending of the branches of visceral uh, the branches of uh, visceral arteries but uh, one more case we need to study and the visceral branch has also paired branches uh, that are the renal artery and the gonadal arteries we need to study them and also uh, one more important artery is uh, middle suprarenal artery the renal artery is quite large and it starts at the level of L1 we can see the renal artery here the right and left renal artery and it is 4 to 8 millimeter wide and is paid vessel that arises from the iota at the level of L1 and 1 to 2 centimeter below the superior mesenteric artery both uh, arteries descends laterally to reach uh, the helm of each kidney there, uh, there they give the anterior and posterior branches that enter the kidney parenchyme the the right artery is longer than the left. It runs behind the inferior vena cava, we can see, and crossing the vertebral column. Each renal artery gives rise to inferior suprarenal artery. We can see the inferior suprarenal artery here. And some small branches to respective ureter, ureteric branches. Uh, the number, va number variations of renal arteries are quite a frequent occurrence. Then the clinical applications are uh, the stenosis of renal artery is, uh, results in uh, hypertension. Uh, it can be resolved by the surgical intervention, by the uh, removal of narrow segment or bypass grafting. Uh, middle suprarenal branch, uh, sorry, middle suprarenal artery. We can see here, it is a thin branch that arises somewhat above the renal artery and runs to the suprarenal gland. Here is the suprarenal, you know, suprarenal gland. Next one is the ovarian or testicular artery. We can see the gonadal arteries or testicular arteries here. It's a long vessel that arises from the iota below the renal artery. It is at the, at the level of L2. Uh, it gives uh, it, it supplies to the uh, the testes in males and over in the females the last portion of this uh, topic the parietal branches of abdominal iota which are the phrenic inferior phrenic artery the lumbar arteries and the median uh, sacral arteries first uh, we can study about the inferior phrenic artery uh, it is paid and it arises from the uppermost segment of abdominal iota, supplies the diaphragm and the suprarenal gland. The lumbar arteries, it is four pairs and run laterally crossing the bodies of the uh, lumbar vertebrae, uh, supplies the uh, muscle of the black, uh, sorry, muscle of the back and the abdominal wall. The artery gives of dorsal branch. And it uh, and dorsal branch it gives to supply to the spinal cord. 
next one is the median sacral uh, artery it is unpaved uh, it arises from the aortic bifurcation at the level of l4 distance along the pelvic surface of sacrum to the lesser pelvic you can see here the pelvic girdle it runs towards the lesser pelvic okay friends i think this video is uh, helpful for you if you like this video please make a thumbs up and share to your friends and subscribe subscribe our channel uh, thank you thank you friends have a nice day bye